possibile iniziare ad aprire? Sì, sì. è finito, è il lavoro da fare è qui. Ah. Ok, so we hang the pictures. Just hang the pictures. Hang them and put them plastic on. To be an artist, to be a photographer, you have to nurture the things that most people discard. You have to keep them alive in order to tap them. That should be more dramatic. It's been important to me my whole life not to let go of any of the things that most people would throw in the ash can. I have to be in touch with my fragility, with the man in me and the woman in me, the child in me, the grandfather in me. All these things they have to be kept alive. I think I do photograph what I'm afraid of. I think I have photographed what I was afraid of. Things that I couldn't deal with without the camera. My father's death, madness. But when I was young women, I didn't understand. It gave me a sort of control over the situation that was legitimate because good work was being done. And by photographing what I was afraid of or what I was interested in, I explored and learned and laid the ghost. It got out of my system and onto the page. When he left Vogue in 1988, he did not leave fashion. But as he has said, his interest had faded. He was still everywhere at once. At the Berlin Wall when it fell, on assignment for Egoist, the French avant-garde magazine, leading the Versace campaigns, and breaking ground at the New Yorker as its first staff photographer. Different animals have different kinds of eyes for accomplishing what their goals are. An eagle has a literal zoom lens in the eye so that from way above he can zoom down on the rodent that he's going to attack. In the same way, I think that my eyes always went towards what I was interested in, the face. He's a great hunter. He just sucks you into he his looking eyes. looking at something other than the surface of your face. He sees. It's very, very disconcerting. They see right through you and beyond you. He didn't and want it's, the it's cup and the saucer and the table and the chair and the background and the tree the and the meadow. He wanted the face. And I believe that it has made Abaddon peculiar in some ways. I think I'm some kind of a reader, some kind of a... I mean, I used to love handwriting analysis, but that's nothing compared to reading a face. I think if I had decided to go into the fortune telling business, or whatever you call it, I probably would have been very good. When what happens to me is that in work, I look for something in a face, and what I look for is contradiction, complexity, things that are. Um, contradictory and at the same time connected. In his 50-year career, Avedon has never stopped exploring the complexity of the human face. He is an eclectic original drawing from an array of sources. Lubitsch's movies, the stark frontal portraits of Nadar and Sander, the drama of Julia Cameron, the playfulness of Lartigue. There are so many different things I've done at so many different times. There was one time when the face was like an explosion. For years, it was this explosion. When an explosion happens, you don't know where it's going to fly, where it's going to go, where the teeth are going to be, where the eye is going to be, what the contradictions are going to be within the face. Uh, is this the laugh cynical? Is it ironic? Is it pain? Is it a scream? Is it a, it, you know, all this concerned me, it didn't concern me, it just took me, overtook me. And that they were all facets of my feelings at that time, at that, those years, that month, that day. Then later, a very quiet, just very quiet. Everything needed to be very quiet, very uncomposed, very unexplosive. Andre, start by doing absolutely nothing. Don't have an idea in your head, just look right in the camera. I work out of a series of no's. No to distracting elements in a photograph. No to exquisite light. 
no to certain subject matter. Certain people are not people I can express myself through. No to props. That's not bad. All these no's force me into the yes. And I have no help. I have a white background. I have the person I'm in. I'm interested in and the thing that happens between us. If these were one of the Stalin portraits, if you were going to die tomorrow morning, do you think you would do anything differently? Why don't you just think that that's what's going to happen? Yeah. To sit with Abaddon and have him look at you is a fairly disconcerting experience because you realize that he's studying you. I don't know whether he's seeing inside you or not. I guess he would say he's not. But he wants to see everything there is to see on that surface. And this has been the making of him as a photographer. But his, even, I'm Johnny, even more. Okay, to the camera, right? Look at this. The strongest thing that Avedon's portraiture represents is a belief that Finally, in the end, there's nothing but the face. And the truth is that the power of the landscape of the face, the crevices and the valleys and the promontories and all of the things that they represent, it's really how we know each other. The, the, there's nothing on earth more fascinating than the human face. While well, Blumenfeld was bringing an experimental eye to fashion imagery, a young American photographer, Richard Avedon, was refreshing classic styling with energy and creative spirit. Daring, stylish and ambitious, Avedon's pictures reflected the optimism of 50s America and turned him into the first celebrity fashion photographer. His status was confirmed by Funny Face, a film based on Avedon and starring Fred Astaire and one of Avedon's favourite models, Davima. This time, let's see if we can't get rid of her. I mean, keep in mind that you're a woman who thinks. Now, that is a piece of sculpture by Itsubuchi. I want you to look at it as if you understand it, as if it understands you. See? In New York, I caught up with a great friend of Richard Avedon and legendary photographer in her own right, Lillian Bassman. Hi, how are you? It's nice to meet you. I'm a big fan. Thank you very much. Is this your new book? It's not a book yet. It's on the way. <laughs> it's a layout. It's a layout. Bassman was one of the great experimenters in fashion photography and remarkably yeah. is still working. That's Lauren Bacall. That's Lauren Bacall. Yeah. What was Lauren Bacall like? She was no problem at all. Everybody said she's going to be so difficult. <laughs> but, uh, Does it feel like a diary? I can't remember names, mm. but I remember every the moments, every moment, every uh, situation in which I photographed all these people who were my friends and I knew well. The models mm. are gone. In this golden age of fashion photography. Lillian worked for Vogue's main rival, Harper's Bazaar, alongside art director Alexei Brodovich. Art directors play a big role in the shaping of the fashion image, and Brodovich was one of the legends. He was marvellous. He would always say, think of a new way of doing something, you know. Force yourself to make that next move, to not to do... The same thing that you did yesterday, today. It was working at Harper's Bazaar that Lillian first helped encourage the talents of the young Rich Davidon. What was it that made him different, do you think? It was his enthusiasm, his youth, his excitement. We went to Europe together, we traveled together, and... He saw a lot more. You know, America didn't have great fashion. And that's why most of Dick's important fashion was done in Europe. And he became interested in being an artist rather than just a fashion photographer. It was in Paris that Avedon took many of his most striking images. And where, inspired by Brodovich's message of thinking differently, 
he proceeded to transform the possibilities of the fashion photograph. The Vima of Elephants is an Avedon masterpiece. Like so many of his pictures, the composition is almost perfect, but it's the introduction of drama and spectacle that makes it so special. So I'm here at Whipsnay Zoo and we're just about to try and recreate the great Richard Avedon photograph, uh, Davima with Elephants. But I've never worked for anything really this size, so the scale of the shoot is kind of making me a bit nervous. You look great. For my Whipsnay remake, we wanted a long sleep model with a touch of the Davima. And it could only be British catwalk legend, Erin O'Connor. I feel so excited. It's one of these days where I just think, wow, I really love my job. I just think this would be an absolute day to remember. He agrees. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm a bit nervous. I have a little growl and I get over it. When I first worked with Richard Abaddon, he told me I reminded him of Davima and he showed me this portrait and he said, um, you're a modern version of, of what this shot embodies. And um, I'm really embarrassed to say the, the, the rest of the room gasped and it was a fashion moment and I was 19 and I had no idea what he was talking about or that he had taken the image. But upon seeing it, I, I thought it was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. Really lovely. And it'd be interesting to see Rankin's take, quite frankly. Her, her left foot's out. Yeah, exactly. It could be odd working for something bigger than me, I have to tell you. <laughs> Boy, I've waited 13 years for this opportunity. I'm feeling eerily competitive. Well, I'm feeling very small. Are you? Sorry. Can not look quite so nervous? Great, we're ready to go, guys. Now, would you just move to your right a little bit? Good. And I just need the elephants a little bit closer together if possible. And the arms. Oh. That's great. Do you know that's the first time I think I've ever taken a photograph where I've not known what to say, like at all, apart from move left, can you bring the elephants together? <laughs> And I was like so dependent you know what, on you. The first time you haven't spoken to me on set. I know. That was odd. Just not getting a bit of rank in banter. I was totally in awe. I think everybody was. They just wanted to watch it unfold. But every so often, I could just feel this really rough skin touching my palms. I was thinking, I wonder what they are thinking. <laughs> And I was quietly petrified at the beginning. <laughs> By the time you got the end shot, I said, this is fine. This is all right. This is the one. This is, I mean, there's a couple. I think that this is, I think your pose in this one. The difference is that these, these elephants are chained down. They do almost look like they're trying to escape. To escape from her, yeah. But maybe it's because of the chain. I'm really glad that ours is different. Well, what's the really funny is that they are absolutely massive, those elephants, and look, you're not that far off. <laughs> it's just the platforms. In many ways, this is the ultimate fashion photograph, perfectly combining grace, beauty, and creative inspiration. Recreating this image was an incredible challenge, so I'm just really pleased we managed to pull it off.